In today's video, we're going to be installing an M90 supercharger in this J35A4 Honda Pilot. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So today I'm going to be adapting the M90 Supercharger to the Honda Pilot J35A4. This method will work for the Odyssey, the J32, and the J37, or at least it will be a lot similar. Um, there is no information out there on any of this, so I hope you guys appreciate the time, money, and effort that I spent putting into all of this. Um, so definitely share it around if you guys want to share this with your buddies with the J series and they want to supercharge because this will also work for J swapped civics or whatever. So I got the prank parts, uh, adapter plate. They made a separate video on this. If you haven't checked that out, link will be in the description. Go watch that and come right back. Um, but if you already watched that video, then you're pretty caught up. I still need to go get a couple bolts for the supercharger to bolt it to the adapter plate. Not a big deal. I can go to Ace, Home, Home Depot, or anywhere that sells various bolt sizes. I'll probably take this piece in with me and thread something in just to verify how the thread pitch is. But uh, yeah, prank parts, definitely not a scam. Highly recommend them. Real quality stuff. Um, I know the name might scare some people into not buying from them, but I took the risk. And as I like to say, no risk, no reward. The risk paid off. It's a really nice kit. So I'm going to actually be adapting all of this, putting it in the J35 in the Honda Pilot, which there's no videos of on the internet as of to date, which is January 26th, 2021. So hopefully this uh, video paves the way for so many people to put a supercharger in their J series because there is no information uh, video wise. There is some information on the forums, but it is very vague. Uh, so thanks to everybody from the forums who have actually contributed as well because I did months of research just to get all this right for you guys. So the belt that I'm going to be using is right here. You can pause the screen if you need to see that. Um, but that's the belt I'm going to try. I don't know that it's going to work yet. We have to put it all in to find out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go to the store, grab the bolts we need move these vehicles out and reposition everything and then we'll uh, go from there so hope you guys enjoy the video please hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here so let's get to it So it was 1117 for all the bolts. I couldn't record in there because the music in the background would have got me a copyright strike. So yeah, we're gonna head back to the house now and uh, try to put all this stuff in. Now this map sensor here is from a D series or a B series, whatever you wanna say it's from. 1988 to 2000 I have like five of these laying around so um, that's actually the one that the kit requires so I went ahead and bolted it in and I already had a connector for the ma uh, map sensor um, so I went ahead and verified the wiring there's not a lot of info out there on the actual way to wire this into the Honda Pilot because this hasn't really been done before um, at least with video proof or on the forms so I'm going to basically just disconnect this sensor and leave the sensor in there so I won't need the throttle block off or the map sensor block off plate. So I decided I was gonna use that little map sensor block off plate for this right here because I didn't have anything to block this hole that goes inside. So I went ahead and uh, just made the hole a little bit bigger and this fits perfectly over it. So I'll use some gasket maker, some black gasket maker on this side here just to make sure there's no leaks and that'll block that off perfectly. These will be blocked off and that's blocked off. So everything should be pretty good. We have a vacuum line here to here. This one here, you don't have to really worry about that. Um, and then we'll bolt this to that just like that. And this is the adapter so we can use the throttle that's on the J35. If you have drive-by wire 
and you're not a cable like mine is, uh, I'm not gonna really know how to help you on this situation. I only know how to do it with a throttle cable. Um, but I'm sure there is a way to do it with drive-by wire. But yeah, basically everything's ready. I wanna show you real quick on the supercharger. There's this spot, this is super important guys. If you flip the supercharger over right where the actuator is or the bypass valve is, there's actually a bolt right down in there. It's an Allen. And what we're going to do, we're going to actually remove that before we install the supercharger. So basically just going to undo it. I like to soak those in um, some penetrant before doing this. Makes it a little easier. That's why this one's so easy. I've already taken it out. Just wanted to show you where it's at. All right, now that we got it flipped over. We're gonna go ahead and take this with the Allen side facing up. We're gonna put it in here and then we're gonna tighten it. Now what this is going to allow us to do, it's going to allow us to run lower boost levels um, if we need. So this will basically keep the bypass valve open just a crack. Um, you don't wanna to run too high of boost levels without a tune any boost levels actually. So this is actually a really nice remedy to a problem that we currently have. I do not have a tuner or anything to tune the Honda Pilot. You can get an AEM computer and get it all wired in and it might work. There is zero information for the J35 Honda Pilot. But I did order an Apexi Neo um, that we are going to be using. It's a piggyback. It will indeed work for this. So that's how we're going to do it. Unfortunately, it's not the proper way, but I can go on low boost safely. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm shooting for right around two to three PSI right now. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, but this is a huge supercharger. So that's a lot of volume. Um, this will push about six to seven with this throttle plate fully closed. So whenever you're in vacuum, this should be wide open. Um, whenever you floor it, this will close, allowing all the air to go through the supercharger and build up a lot of boost. So, uh, there are a few things in this video we're not going to do yet, but we will get the thing on and running. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing that now. Okay, now we got the supercharger bolted down. Um, thanks to my buddy Matt over here, oh, we were looking at how the throttle would mount because 
the original way it's supposed to mount, it will not work with the air idle control valve. So if you look right here with it like that, go up, you know, the, the holes right here do not line up because it would be touching down here. So we had to flip this spacer or this adapter plate upside down. And once we did that, everything lined up fine. Now, yes, this does stick up a lot taller and most people will probably be like, ew, it's not eye appealing. But I retain my cruise control, the factory throttle setup, the air idle control valve. Now I plan on bypassing this anyways. This is just coolant that flows through one side and out the other. I don't live in cold enough conditions. It's Texas. We're not gonna get cold enough for that. And if we do, I'll just let it warm up because this is a supercharger. They put out a lot of heat. So it will be upside down. Yes, it will look goofy, but we will we will manage. Um, that way we can retain all of the factory components. Now what we will have to do, here's the map sensor I showed you earlier, the wiring for the 1988 to 2000 Honda Civic D series, B series, H series, F series, I believe. Um, these are all the same map sensor style. Um, this will all be wired, which I will have a diagram of once we actually do that wiring, which is coming up real soon. It'll be next on the list. Uh, this here will go to the very top of the throttle when it's up here. Um, this is for the aerial control valve. So we're going to actually not necessarily cut the harness open, but pull the harness open and extend the wire so we don't have to actually cut and extend. The only thing we're going to have to do for cutting and soldering is the map sensor which they do make a kit I'm just uh, super impatient so I'm gonna do it this way you guys don't have to cut your harness they actually make adapters it's for the K to B series um, adapter harness which I'll try to leave a link in the description for you guys um, so you can just it'll all be plug and play and you won't have to cut in your harness but I'm gonna go ahead and extend these and see where everything sets and uh, then we'll put the belt on after that but before we put the belt on, we'll fire it up, make sure it runs right with this flipped upside down. If it doesn't run right, we'll have to make a throttle, uh, block off plate for the air idle control valve and hope that works. But we're going to go ahead and start doing this. to mention is this dipstick I just bent the tip of it over some so it had some clearance for the belt when the belt runs up through here we're gonna have to take this off um, this is just the power steering you will lose some so be prepared for that um, the belt will go around it and then it can go back on and then we've got this uh, set of wires here I just zip tied it out of the way right here so that way it doesn't get in the belt area because it does typically go across there so um, basically just going to remove that belt right here it's really easy down there there's a 14 millimeter bolt and that's on the tensioner and you will basically just uh, release the tension off the belt take the old belt off and route the new belt in so i'm going to go ahead and do that and once the belt is routed in i'll show you exactly how i routed it so there won't be any confusion okay got the belt on i did have to get a different belt I went with this K0608 or 6K858, 86 and 3 eighths. Uh, it's a pretty long belt, but it's because I have that factory adapter uh, spacer down here. Most people actually remove them. Um, I kept mine just to keep it exactly how it is. It gives more torque or something like that. So it's a, I think it's about a two inch spacer. If you don't have that spacer there, you need an 81 and a half inch belt. Yeah, as you can see, it fits real well, has decent tension. And I got the power steering um, line to clear. Um, I'll put a little video clip right here to explain. 
Okay, I'm out here at Budget Wrench Apart here in Belton, Texas, and I wanted to show you the difference um, between my engine and this 2005 Honda Pilots. See this piece right here? It comes off power steering. Um, we're going to take this out. There's literally just one 10 millimeter bolt right down there at the bottom. And then we'll put, pull this out. Uh, we'll probably replace the O-ring that is in there just so that whenever we put it on mine, it doesn't have air sucking in. Um, but I'm going to take this hose as well. So that way it will fit perfectly with the supercharger belt. Because these go up right here as one serpentine belt. Now on the 2003s, I'll show you how that design looks. Okay, so this is a 2003 and as you can see, it goes towards me instead of up. And this is a skinny belt. So there's two belts. You've got your normal AC and alternator charging belt and then you have a separate power steering belt so this goes right where the supercharger belt is that's why i came out here to the junkyard is basically to just grab this piece and this hose so as a quick tip i just wanted to let you guys know you can take the pieces here at the junkyard and just test fit them while you're out there so that way you're not buying stuff that won't work basically just pulled this one off and put the other one on and verified that it all fits and since it does i'm gonna go ahead and buy it just a quick little tip, I figured I'd share with you guys. So yeah, just using factory components, you can make it all work. As you can see right here on the bypass valve, I zip tied it open to stay open pretty much all the time, um, whether it's in boost or whether it's vacuum. The reason I did this is because it would build up seven PSI and I'm not tuned for that. Now it builds up one. So here is a little video clip of it driving. Here's just giving it a little bit of gas. As you can see it built up one psi i also have a video clip of it building up a little more than that um, with that back out screw right there adjusted all the way up um, so here's a little video of that but either way it runs strong i don't know the air fuel ratio so i don't want to risk it by getting on it too much um, but yeah everything works the air out of control valve is super important that's why i have the throttle upside down here's a little video clip of why you should have the air idle control valve. This is how it would run without it. That's not good. So, definitely important to have the air idle control valve. That's why I flipped the throttle upside down just to have it. You can see it definitely does not run very well. So I'm glad I just flipped it all upside down and it worked. Um, I did dent up here just to make sure there was clearance. I painted a piece of tape, put a piece of tape on here, painted it, and shut the hood. And the only place that paint touched was that. So plenty of clearance, and it's awesome. So the factory piece that goes where this adapter plate is actually has holes for the EGR on both sides. Um, since it's blocked off, it can't sense it, so it says low flow for the EGR. When that happens, the VTM light comes on, check engine light, and that's pretty much the only code that comes up. But it stays off most of the time. I just would have to figure out how to uh, make the EGR work, which I will rig something up and figure out a way. That way you can keep the EGR, get your good gas mileage, and not have any check engine codes. Prankparts.com did an awesome job. Um, there's a few things I'd change, but not a big deal. The rest of it can be figured out. It's not too hard. I'll definitely leave a um, spot in the description saying exactly what belt I have here and linking anything that I can that I used on here. Um, you basically just got to find your own bolts, see what fits for the bolts, but uh, the rest is pretty straightforward and works. So before I finish this video, I just wanted to tell you that Aubrey did come by in his NSX that is J35 swapped. Uh, we went ahead and I told him we're just gonna try this adapter plate on his NSX. We're gonna we're gonna try testing it on yours first. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so he was super happy to do that. So we went ahead and test fit it. We removed the intake spacer uh, to give it a little more clearance, and we still need about another inch of clearance. So we might have to use a different kit, but we're gonna try to find a way to work around that and we will be supercharging with another M90, which I have right here. Uh, I found it at the junkyard, picked it up for them, and uh, 
yeah, so that'll be hopefully in a future video. It's getting supercharged. Oh, it's getting charged. It, does, it doesn't get a choice now, so. Uh, no. Don't have a time frame for you, but definitely stay tuned, subscribe, hit that bell icon on to get notified of every upload, and uh, definitely stay tuned because we have more coming. Um, I will also be installing this Apexi Neo. That's how we're going to be tuning this, or at least hacking it, because they don't exactly have a Honda for the Honda Pilot. This is all experimental. I'm pretty much laying the base foundation and hoping that someone else takes over and literally makes all the cool parts for this. The Apexi Neo is going to be the piggyback that I'm using. You can get these, uh, you know, find a marketplace fairly cheap. Buying them brand new is like five, six hundred bucks. I'll leave a link in the description for theirs to their website. Uh, you want to get the one that does VTEC. This one here does VTEC. Uh, I didn't pay a whole lot for it. Um, so I'm going to be installing that in a separate video. I got to put the wideband in. I probably won't do video of that since I already have video of how to put a wideband in. We just won't be hooking up data logging cables or anything like that. So it'll literally just be the sensor so we can monitor air fuel ratios um, so we know that we're not blowing it up. So there's still some things to do, but it runs strong and uh, taking it to and from the grocery store multiple times and it's, it's holding up great. So um, if you guys like this video and thought it was informative, please share with everyone that you know that has a J series or wants their pilot to be super cool. This is the first one on the internet that I have seen um, that is supercharged. So I'm gonna go ahead and get off here. Thanks for coming by. Definitely hit the like button, drop a comment below, subscribe if you are new here, turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.